I know uh, we're starting a little earlier than usual. Uh, we're hoping to beat the heat and still honor Hashem at the, in the same breath. So with that being said, with that being said, please all rise for the reading of Scripture. We'll be reading Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who by his power working in us is able to do far beyond anything we ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the messianic community and throughout the kingdom of God and in Messiah Yeshua from generation to generation forever. Amen. 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 Father God, we thank you for your hand being over those who call upon your name. We thank you that you have chosen us and not forsaken us. We ask that those you have chosen, that they have the confidence and assurance to step forward boldly, to follow you, to reflect your goodness, and to be a blessing in this time and season. We pray this in Yeshua's name, and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, what do you expect today? We read the Torah scroll, the first five books of the Holy Scriptures over one full year, each week having its own reading. We are a multilingual congregation using English, Hebrew, and Spanish. The prayers and blessings are led by our cantoral team. Many parts are interactive. We all worship together. Traditional greetings are Shabbat Shalom or Gut Shabbos, which means may you have a peaceful Sabbath. Blowing of the shofar is a call to assembly and worship. So please stand, if possible, as those trained with the shofar come forward. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar, and they will gather his chosen people from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So far. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commanded us to hear the call of the shofar. Amen. Thanksgiving for Yeshua, along with many traditional blessings, we have a renewed covenant blessing, thanking God for giving us the way to salvation in our Messiah Yeshua. Yeshua walked among us, filled with your spirit, the only one who ever fulfilled your Torah. He healed the sick and raised the dead. The multitudes of our people sought his touch. He taught as no man taught, with authority, he brought forth the treasures of the Torah, how the children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean, how the despised and outcasts found love and release from their sin, how the hypocrites feared him whose words uncovered their sin. Despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of Israel. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, turned everyone to his own way. Our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name, 
We are in him. His spirit empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who has given us Messiah Yeshua, our King. Yeshua, but Messiah, Yeshua, Baruch. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Blessed is he. Amen. And the motto, boo. Mato Hu O Hale Hayako Mishkin of Teha Israel. How good are thy tents, O Jacob? Tabernacles, Israel, the only there has to have a bobate. Shalom. Shalom. Oh, come, let us sing for joy to Adonai. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs, for Adonai is a great God and a great king above all gods. Blessed be his name. And the Mika Mocha. Mika Mocha me
and the Lechado D. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride. The presence of Shabbat we receive. Observe and remember the Sabbath day. The only God calls us to hear in a single utterance. The Lord is one and his name is one. For his renown and his glory and his praise. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride. The presence of Shabbat we receive. Come, my beloved, shake off the dust. Arise, dress in garments of glory, my people. Through the son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, redemption draws near to my soul. Come, my beloved, wake up, wake up, for your light has come. Awaken, awaken, sing a song, for the glory of the Lord is revealed to you. Come, my beloved. <clears throat> the Amidar standing prayer is the oldest of our traditional prayers, going back to the early Second Temple times. There are many parts to the Amidah, and some of the Shabbat portions differ from the weekday sections. <clears throat> Adonai sefatai tivta. O fia ki te hila My Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. The Avot. Blessed are you, Lord our God, the God of our forefathers, God of Abraham, God of Yitzhak, and God of Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the supreme God, who bestows beneficial kindnesses and creates everything, who recalls the kindness of the patriarchs and brings a redeemer, to their children's children, for his name's sake with love. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, O Lord, Shield of Abraham, the Gavrot. You are eternally mighty, my Lord, the one who restores life from the grave, greatly able to save. He sustains the living with kindness, revives the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds? And who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to bring back life to the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who revives the dead. Kadosh Hashem, you are holy, and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day forever. Blessed are you, O Lord the Holy God, and the Hodu. Hodu la donai ki to ki le olam kasu Hodu la donai ki to ki le olam kasu Hodu Oh, do, oh, do, 
Give thanks to the Lord, He is good. His mercy forever endures. Give thanks to the Lord, He is good. His mercy forever endures. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Uh, this time if we can all face east. cover our eyes in humility to Hashem as we recite the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Hafta et Aronai Lukeha, the Holy Valka of Horn of Sheko, the Homeo Deha, the Hayuha de Venim Ha Ale, Asher and Okimata Veka Hayom Ale Veka, the Shina Tam de Veneca Vedi Bartel Bam, the Shiteka Beveteka Ubla Teka Vadek Ushubeka Ukomeka, Ukshatam le or Ayadeka Veka Yula Tota Fort, Vein and Neha, Ukutam Al Mezozot Beteka Uvish Areha. Here, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall speak of them when you sit at home and when you walk along the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be for frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and prophets hang on these two commandments. Amen. And at this time, everybody join me for the Elenu. Elenu le'aton hako. La tate gedula leotse breshi. Shelo asanu ke gayo haratsoi. Velo samanu ke mishpe kod hadama. Shelo sam khaukenu kahem. Vego. Oh, 
It is our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he made us unlike the nations of the lands and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portion like theirs and our lot like all their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the King over kings, the Holy One, blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation. And the seat of his glory is in the heavens above, and the presence of his power is in the most exalted heights. He is our God and there is none other. True is our King. There is nothing beside him, as it is written in his Torah. And you shall know this day and take it to heart that the Lord, he is God. In the heavens above and on the earth below, there is none other. And it is said, the Lord shall be king over all the world. On that day, the Lord will be one and his name one. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and the Adonolam. Adonolam, Asher Malach, Beterem Kuyitinibra, Let Nasa, before any form was created. When creation came about by his will, then as king was his name proclaimed to be. And after all has ceased to be, he alone will reign in awesomeness. And he was and he is and shall be eternally in splendor. And he is first and there is no second to compare to him. To be is equal without beginning and without end. His is the power and dominion. And he is my God, my living redeemer, and the rock of my pain in times of trouble. And he is my banner and a refuge for me, the portion of my cup in the day I call upon him. In his hands I entrust my spirit, in the time I sleep or am awake. And with my spirit, my body, the Lord is with me, I shall not fear. Amen. Moshe rejoiced in the gift of his portion that you called him a faithful servant. A crown of splendor you placed on his head when he stood before you on Mount Sinai. He brought down two stone tablets on his hand on which is inscribed the observance of Shabbat. So it is written in your Torah. <clears throat> Let's go to Tamberin, Ola. 
כשש ימים עשה אדוני, עשה אדוני אל השמיים ואל הארץ The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. <clears throat> you did not give it, O Lord our God, to the nations of the lands, nor did you make it an inheritance, our king, of the worshipers of graven idols. For to Israel your people have you given it in love, to the seed of Yaakov, whom you have chosen. The people that sanctified the seventh, they will all be satisfied and delighted from your goodness. And the seventh, you found favor in it and sanctified it. Most coveted of days, you called it a remembrance of the act of creation. Our God and the God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us with your commandments and grant us our share in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and gladden us with your salvation and purify our hearts to serve you sincerely. O Lord our God, with love and favor, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage, and may Israel, the sanctifiers of your name, rest in it. Blessed are you, O Lord, who sanctifies the Shabbat. <clears throat> Thank you for showing respect to the word of God while the Torah scroll is brought out of the ark by facing the scroll during the procession and standing for the Torah reading. <coughs> Ya Amor Moshe bin Abraham la Torah. Come forward, Moshe, son of Abraham, to the Torah. There is none like you, O Lord, among the gods that are worshipped, and there are no deeds like yours. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Source of mercy, let your goodness be a blessing to Zion. Let Yerushalayim be rebuilt. In you alone do we trust, O sovereign God, high and exalted, Lord of all the world. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forth, Moshe would say, Rise up, Lord, and scatter your enemies, and may those who hate you run from you. Torah will go forth out of Zion and the Lord's word from Yerushalayim. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave Torah to his people Israel. Vayahi ben Soharon, Vayomer Moshe, Kumah Adonai, Veyafutsu Evecha, Veyanusu Misanecha, Mipanecha, Ki Metzion Tetze Torah, Ki
Barku et onai Adonai Hamvora. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher bar karvanu mikol hayamim, Vetan lanu et orato. Baruch ata Adonai, Notein ha Torah. Amen. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. The Torah. Uh, this week's Parsha is Hukat, and we will be reading from Numbers uh, chapter 19, verses 1 and 2 in Hebrew, and uh, we'll be reading... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> By Daber Adonai El Moshe Ba El Aharon Ba Lemur Zot Hukat Ha Torah Asher Siva Adonai Lemur Daber El Bnei Israel Vihu Alecha Fara Aduma Timima Asher Ein ba moon Asher lo Allah Alecha ov. That which was read in Hebrew was Numbers 19, 1 and 2. Adonai said to Moshe and Aharon, This is the regulation from the Torah, which Adonai has commanded. Tell the people of Israel to bring you a young red female cow without fault or defect, and which has never borne a yoke. Tell the people, oh, sorry, keep going. Uh, you are to give, oh wait, it's just the seventh question. Sorry. sorry. That's Numbers 21, sorry. <clears throat> Israel sent messengers to Shihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through your land. We will not turn into fields or vineyards, nor drink well water. We shall walk along the king's roads until we have passed through your territory. But Sion did not permit Israel to pass through its territory. And Sion gathered all his people and went out to the desert toward Israel. He arrived at Jahaz and fought against Israel. Israel smote him with the sword and took possession of his land from Arnon to Jabbok, as far as the children of Ammon for the border of the for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. Israel took all these cities, and the Israelites dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites. 
in Heshbon and all its villages. For Heshbon was the city of Shihon, the king of the Amorites. And he had fought against the first king of Moab, taking all his land from his possession as far as Arnon. Concerning this, those who speak in parables say, Come to Heshbon, may it be built and established as the city of Sihon. For fire went forth from Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It consumed Ar of Moab, the masters of the high places of Arnon. Woe is to you, Moab. You are lost, people of Chemosh. His sons he has given over as refugees and his daughters into captivity to Sihon, king of the Amorites. Their kingdom is destroyed from Heshbon. It has been removed from Tibon. We laid them waste as far as Nofa, which is near Madiba. Israel settled in the land of the Amorites. Moses sent men, Moshe sent men to spy out Jazir, and they captured its villages, driving out the Amorites who lived there. Then they turned and headed towards, toward, the, toward Bashan, Og, king of Bashan, came out toward them with all his people to wage war at Idri. The Lord said to Moshe, Do not fear him, for I have delivered him and his people and his land into your hand. You shall do to him as you did to Sion, the king of the Amorites, who dwells in Heshbon. They smote him, his sons all his, and all his people, until there was no survivor, and they took possession of his land. The children of Israel encamped in the plains of Moab across the Jordan from Jericho. Okay, um, uh, <laughs> to my Kahila, I, um, I spent all this week praying, praying that God would give us a word. And what really stood out among this week's portion was uh, the fifth portion. In that, in that portion, our people, our people, Israel, walked so far for so long, 40 years, and pretty much fought the whole way with kings and with their armies and after all that, after everything that they that they went through, they started to doubt. And uh, in Numbers chapter 19, verse 4, it says that they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to circle the land of Edom, and the people became disheartened because of the way. Well, there's something I know about the way from Matthew chapter 7, verse 14, and that is that Narrow is the gate, and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. This way is hard, this way is rough, but it is the way to life, and the Bible shows us that time and time again. And after the people became disheartened, they began to speak against Israel. They began to speak against Moshe and against God. And so the Lord set against the people venomous snakes, and many died. Which reminded me of another snake in Genesis chapter 3, which injected Eve and Adam with his sinful ways, his venom, which leads to death. In verse 7, the people came to Moses, realizing what they've, what they've done, realizing that they gossiped that they committed Lashon Hara and they prayed to the Lord that he remove the snakes so Moses prayed of course for his people and the Lord sent us the Messiah make yourself a serpent and put it on a pole whoever is bidden will look at it and live Moses put a copper snake on, on a pole and everyone who gazed upon it lived which that brought me a question, why a snake? I mean, why didn't God make a lion, a lamb? Why didn't he make something else, you know, something to show that he had um, power over the snake? Well, 
It tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteous of God, free from sin. That's what righteousness means, free from sin, free from death, from the snake's venom. The only way to get anti-venom is from a snake. He became the snake, and through him, now we can live righteously. What uh, that's, that snake was that bit us was the adversary, our adversary. He injected us with venom, and his venom was self, self-pride. And everything that, in, that comes with that, which is um, selfishness, uh, self-seeking, self-gratification, self-exaltation about me only which ultimately leads to self-destruction but the gift of God which we have right here is eternal life and we see that through the selfless love that God has delivered us from delivered us to so all we have to do is to gaze at this which gaze to means look to look steadily and intently especially in admiration surprise or thought and all of that comes when you read the torah as we all go on through our own lives our own paths in our own wilderness we have to realize that nothing's changed nothing's changed we're still in the desert of our own deserts until we come to this hole here, grab on to this, and what is um, one of the verses that we say quite often, Proverbs 3.17, all her ways are pleasant, all her paths are peace, and that's this that we're talking about right here, it comes all from this, if we're struggling with peace, our answers in this. If we're struggling and need protection, our armor is in here. The sword to defeat our enemy is right here. And all we have to do is gaze into it. So we, we as a Kahila, are B'nai Israel. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. He's right here. And all you have to do is gaze and read. The enemy will fear us when we are not afraid. When when we realize that our God is with us. Amen. 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 Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natalanu Torah Emet Vaicha Olam Nata Betuheinu Baruch Ata Adonai, Notein Ha Torah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Vizot ha Torah, Asher Samoshe, Rif me bene Israel, Api Adonai, Riyad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moshe placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moshe's hand. Devarim 4:44.
see it. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Bachar Ben Vim Tovim Veratzavim Amen Amen Baruch Atah Adonai Avoker Batorah of Moshe Abdo, of Israel Amo, of in Behemoth Batsadeh. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who selected good prophets and was pleased with their words, which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chooses the Torah, your servant Moshe, your people Israel, and prophets of truth and righteousness. This week's top Torah is Judges chapter 11. Verses 1 through 33. Now Yiftach, a brave soldier from Gilead, was the son of a prostitute. His father Gilead and other sons by his wife. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Yiftach away and told him, You will not inherit from our father because you are another woman's son. Then Yiftach fled from his brothers and lived in the territory of Zov where he enlisted a gang of rowdies who would go out raiding with him. After a while, the people of Ammon made war against Israel. When the army of Ammon attacked Israel, the leaders of Gilead went to fetch Yitzhak from the territory of Tob and said to him, come and be our chief so that we can fight the army of Ammon. Yitzhak answered the leaders of Gilead, didn't you hate me so much that you forced me out of my father's house? Why are you coming to me now when you're in trouble? So the leaders of Gilead replied, Here is why we've come back to you now. If you lead us in war with the people of Ammon, you will be head over everyone living in Gilead. You've talked, answered them, If you bring me back home to fight the army of Ammon, and Adonai defeats them for me, I will be your head. The leaders of Gilead said to you've talked, Adonai is witness that we promise to do what you have said. Then Yitzhak went to the, with the leaders of Gilead, and the people made him head and chief over them. Yitzhak repeated all these conditions at Mitzvah in the presence of Adonai. Yitzhak sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon to say, What's your problem with us? Why are you invading our territory? The king of Ammon answered the messengers of Yitzhak, Because Israel took away my territory when they camp up from Egypt, came up from Egypt. They took everything from the Ar Arnon to the Yabok and the Yardim. Now restore it peacefully. Yitzhak sent messengers again to the king of Ammon with this response. Here is what Yitzhak has to say. Israel captured neither the territory of Moab nor the territory of the people of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt, walked through the desert to the Red Sea and arrived at Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom to say, please let us pass through your land. But the king of Edom wouldn't let them. He sent a similar message to the king of Moab, but neither would he, so Israel stayed in Kadesh. Then they walked through the desert around the territory of Edom and the territory of Moab, past the east border of the territory of Moab, and pitched camp to the other, ter the other side of Arnon. But they did not cross the border into Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Israel sent messengers to Shikon, king of the Amari, and king of Heshbon, with this message. Please let us pass through your land to our own place. But Shikon, Shikon did not trust that Israel would only pass through his land. So he gathered all his people together, pitched camp at Yahatz, and fought against Israel. Adonai, the God of Israel, handed Shikon and all his people over to Israel, and they killed them. Thus Israel possessed all the territory of the Amari who lived there. They took possession of all the territory of the Amori from the Arnon to the Yabok and from the desert to the Yardim. So now that Adonai, the God of Israel, has expelled the Amori 
before his people Israel. Do you think that you will expel us? You should just keep the territory your God, Kamosh, has given you, while we, for our part, will hold on to whatever Adonai our God has given us of the lands that belong to others before us. Really, are you better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever pick a quarrel with Israel or fight with us? Israel lived in Heshbon and its villages, in Eroer and its villages, and in all the cities of the banks of the Arnon for 300 years. Why didn't you take them back during that time? No, I have done you no wrong, but you are doing me wrong to war against me. May Adonai, the judge, be judged today between the people of Israel and the people of Ammon. But the king of the people of Ammon paid no attention to the message of Yitak sent him. Then the spirit of Adonai came upon Yitak and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh on through Mitzpah of Gilead and from there over to the people of Ammon. Yitak made a vow to Adonai. If you will hand the people of Ammon over to me, then whatever comes out the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Ammon will belong to Adonai. I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. So Yiftak crossed over to fight the people of Ammon and Adonai handed them over to him. He killed them from Aurora until you reach Minit, 20 cities all the way to Avel Karamim. It was a massacre, so the people of Ammon were defeated before the people of Israel. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Sor koho alamim zedik beko hadorot, Ha'el haneman ha'omer ve'el sey, Ha'mdaber umkayim, Shekol devarav emet bat zedek, Neman atahu Adonai Eloheinu, Vene emanim devarecha, Vedevarecha mivarecha, Achor lo yashuv recham Ki el melek neman Verachaman ata Baruch ata Adonai Ha el ha neman Bechol devarav Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, Rock of all eternities, Faithful in all generations, The trustworthy God who says and does, Who speaks and makes it come to pass, All of whose words are true and righteous, Faithful are you, O Lord our God, And faithful are your words, for not one of your words is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God who is faithful in all his words. Amen. Blessed is you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the renewed covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. And today's reading is from John 2. John 2, 1 through 12. On Tuesday, there was a wedding in Cana, in the, in the Galilee. The mother of Yeshua was there. Yeshua was too was invited to the wedding along with his Talmudim. The wine ran out and Yeshua's mother said to him, there's no more wine. Yeshua replied to his mother, Why should that concern me or you? My time has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do what he tells you. Now six stone water jars were standing there for the Jewish ceremonial washings. 
each with a capacity of 20 or 30 gallons. Now draw some water out and take it to the man in charge of the banquet. And they took it. The man in charge of the banquet tasted the water. It had now turned into wine. He did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. So he called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and the poorer wine after the people have drunk freely. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of Yeshua's miraculous signs, he did at Cana in the Galil. He manifested his glory and his Talmudim came to trust in him. Afterwards, his mother and brothers and his Talmudim went to Kephar Nahum and stayed there a few days. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of truth and has planted life everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. Amen. Please all rise. And the Yes Hayim He. Et Hayim He. Le Mahasikim Ba. Vetomeha. Mesha. Deraheha. Darhe Noam. Vehod Tiboteha. Shalom. Ashvenu Adonai, Elecha Veneshuva, Hadesh, Hadesh Yomenu, Hadesh Yomenu Kekedem. A tree of life to those who take hold of her, and all who support her are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Return us, O Lord, to you, and we shall return. Renew our days as in the days of old. Amen. May he who blessed our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, bless those who come to honor God and the Torah. May the Holy One send blessings upon them and upon their families and upon all the works of their hands. May our eyes behold your return to Zion in compassion. Blessed are you, O Lord, who restores his presence to Zion. Grant peace, goodness, and blessing, grace, kindness, and mercy to us and to all your people, Israel. Bless us, our Father, all of us together through the light of your presence. Truly, through the light of your presence, Adonai, our God, you gave us a Torah of life. Love of kindness, justice and blessing, mercy, life and peace. May you see fit to bless your people Israel at all times 
at every hour with your peace. Shabbat Shavuot. Inscribe us for life. Blessing, peace, and prosperity. Remembering all your people, Israel, for life and peace. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of peace. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. Shabbat Shalom. Drosh of the day. Great job, uh, the entire pe team that got up here and uh, blessed the Lord with the half Torah, the Besorah, and the Torah portions. Great job. Nice Drosh on that. Very, very nicely done. Uh, with that being said, uh, Sister Lisa, would you come and pray for the tithes and offerings? Thank you so much. You know, you know, when you're grinning that much, I have to call on you. That's all I'm saying. Those of you watching at home, guard your eyes because her, her smile might uh, start <laughs> Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you do for us, um, all your provision. We thank you for your, for your provision, and we pray that... Um, Everything we offer up to you today will be used for your glory and that you will multiply it and use it how you see fit, Lord. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. 
so thankful to God that we have so many bright people here. Amen. I mean, so bright they, they almost reflect the sunlight. All right. We'll give you all a couple of minutes. Uh, those of you watching online, the uh, link will be placed in the comment section. Okay. With that being said, it is, it is getting, you know what, praise God, we're here, we have a decent little breeze, we have the shade, so it's probably about 12 degrees less than what it is out there. Yeah, so, with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into today's drosh, amen? Amen. Okay, so this week's Torah portion is titled Chukat or statues or ordinance, depending on how your, or what your level of word understanding is. Okay, so I'm gonna start out a little bit differently and just bear with me as I go through this process. As the Lord is definitely moving all throughout the globe in this day and age. I think one of the more th one of the things for us to pay attention to because God is moving in this day and age is that while all you believers and, and followers of God, of the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, the author of Yeshua himself, that very same God who is still speaking today and still on his throne today, So those of you who are looking and waiting for a Moses to be risen up, for a, a, a Abraham to be risen up, for a, a Peter, a Paul to be risen, risen up, you're it. You are the Peter, the Paul, the, the Moshe of this time and season. And what, if you're not stepping out of faith, that's why those things aren't being done right now, right? The grand, grand scale of healing, the grand scale of, of blessing and compassion for others who aren't there yet. If you ask why those aren't being poured out in great abundance today, it's because you aren't stepping out in faith. Those of you who identify with the faith, faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the author of our very Yeshua. Let's go further on, though. 2,000 years ago, the crowd voted between Barabbas and Yeshua. Today, in, a, in this very nation that we happen to have been planted in, to tikkun olam here where we are, to repair the word he, world here where we are, to prepare for the king's coming here where we are, and those of you wherever you happen to be, there where you are, and even today, people are still voting for Barabbas over Yeshua. Think about that alone for a minute. Every time we choose a selfish motive, a motive that feeds our ego, our grandizement, oh, look how great I am. I helped all these people. No. Look how great God is that he used you to help these people, right? That's the more accurate terminology. But let me go further on. So today is no different. Well, you don't understand, brother. I like it when they start out that way. You don't understand, brother. Oh, we're brothers now. Let me, let, me, let me give you a little bit of the difference, okay, between brothers and acquaintances, okay? And I hopefully, hopefully you'll get the gist as, as I go through this message. They, they used to say something like, well, I don't want to impose my faith upon anyone. And that would be all good and well. But the reality is, is this exact country was founded on faith. And though a lot of tragedies have happened throughout the generations in this country, done heinous things, done behind the guise of righteousness that wasn't righteousness. 
Well, let me say it a different way. Yeshua warns us that if we are ashamed of our faith, he would in fact be ashamed of us when we got before the throne. That alone should be something for you to consider. Yes, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. As in the day of old, when mistruth rang out, loud as can be in the forms of blatant idol worship, today mistruth rings out loud, saying that you people who follow God, y'all must also adhere to saying, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's not okay. Listen, if you want to if you want to practice the Sodom practices, if you want to practice the things as if you're a, a citizen of Gomorrah, that's your choice. You have the free will to do so. But do not come to people who are walking in faith and tell them that they have to now adhere and recognize you as whatever. Right? We will respect your choice because that is God's gift to you. And we will ask that you do the same for us. Let me go further on. As in the days of old when mistruth rang loud in the form of blatant idol worship, the difference between then and now is that now people utilize feelings or how they identify in the guise of their idol worship. That's the difference. Let me ask you, for those of you watching, those of you hearing, why not then if you're having a, a identity crisis, why not identify as holy? Why not identify as kosher, right? That seems better than identifying as A, B, or C. I'd rather identify as kosher. I'd rather identify as holy. Or here's, here's one. How about identifying as a morally upright man? That's a rarity today. Huh? Identifying as a morally upright man. That would be something unique. Or how about this? And this may be a shocker. Identifying yourself as a morally right female. How about that? That would be great, right? Oh my gosh. The revelation. You might start a trend if you do it today. Start identifying as holy, and that might catch on also. And here's a few others to help with your identity crisis, in case you or anyone you love is having one. Identify yourself as chosen, loved, purposed, destined. Those are all great, right? And then once you identify yourself as that, then start doing or taking the, the steps to get there, right? Then start taking the steps to get to that holy identification, to get to that chosen and loved and blessed identification. If that's what we're doing, then me and my house, we choose to identify as holy. All right? Let's go further on. But the reality is, in this continued silence from the nation of priests, from the nation of believers, from the tree of God, from the nation of servants and children, while on the watch, and, and look, this is not to point fingers at any specific one, but the kingdom of God does have to wake up. Those of you who profess to be believers in Jesus, oh, I said the G, J word. <laughs> Those of you who profess to be followers of Yeshua, those of you who profess to be followers of Elohim, those of you who profess that you are observant to any portion of that book. Let me give you the starch reality of it. 
children of God, servants of God. One in five males every year are sexually abused. One in four females every year are sexually abused and or raped. 130 people every single day take their own lives. 22 of those happen to be veterans. And on the statistics, I could stay here all day giving you these numbers, all day. I love numbers. I don't really like what they represent or the numbers that are so dramatic that way, but they're numbers. <clears throat> and those are only some of the stats for today's environment and generation. Mind you, all this is happening on your watch. Who's gen whose time is it right now? Yours, right? Who did, God, who did God raise up in this time? You. He rose y'all up. He rose y'all up. So all this is happening on our watch. We're the ones on the gate. We're the ones proclaiming his good news. We're the ones sharing his Torah. And yet, this is happening. And instead of, how about this for once? How about, instead of everybody just pointing, well, this synagogue's better than this synagogue. Well, this church is better than this church. Who cares? You're both going to have to stand before the king and give an accounting while you spent all your days showing how you're better than a different branch of his kingdom. That makes no sense. You wasted too much time and energy on that. And you're supposed to be out in the highways and byways and outermost places to pre presenting the truth, right? This is, what we're supposed to, this is what we're called to do, to present the truth. And the first presentation of that truth has to be in our homes and in how we carry ourselves on those highways, byways, and outermost places. In Judaism, we are called to be God's partners in creation. In Christianity, we are called to be his hands and feet. Brothers and sisters, we have to do better. We have to do better. And that's, that's from me on to whoever else is listening. We have to do better. What does that mean? Again, going back to a study we did, me and the guys, a few, probably months ago now, we were studying on Tikkun Olam, repairing the world. And part of repairing the world means you have to get involved in it. Right? We cannot fix a car without getting into it. Right? Or can you? Anybody ever fix a car from just by looking at it? No? Nobody? Okay, so that's a myth then, okay? Nobody can fix a car just by looking at it. Gotcha. But we have to get involved in the world that has been entrusted to us. All those who are watching, all those who will hear this, the world is as it is because you have not set your hands to it. Right? Right? They, they, they've, they've caused you to become silent. You know, one of the things that, and it says it in the Midrash. It doesn't really say it anywhere else, but it says it right there in the Midrash for this specific Torah portion. That one of the clues to why so that first half had to pass away there in the wilderness is because they had become familiar with Edom, right? What does it mean when you become familiar? Comfortable. Yeah. You start taking a little bit, right? It's all right. This practice right here, it has nothing that's non-kosher in it. So it's okay for me to do it, right? No. 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 No, you cannot dress up idolatry in a prayer shawl and call it holy. It's still idolatry. Just now, you have made a prayer shawl on kosher. That's all you've done. You haven't done anything to help any of it. You didn't bother to speak the truth, share the truth, or express love. Let's go further. 
the world right now exactly where we are standing, you, me, and everybody who is currently on this floating rock, we have been entrusted with his creation right now. Not tomorrow, not back when Abram was here, right now. So any excuse you want to give or make or say or think of is just exactly that, an excuse. Let's go further on. It has been entrusted to us as representatives of Israel, as representatives of Yeshua, and even as ev representatives of Eloheinu, our God. So how do we start? How do we start? How do we start? Let's see. They asked Yeshua, Rabbi, what is the greatest command of all in the Torah? And Yeshua answered, who knows this answer? What did Yeshua answer? Love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Be hafta et Adonai, right? Love the Lord your God, right? And the beginning of that is to pay attention to do so, right? Right? It's, uh, English says, hear, O Israel. But Shema is pay attention to, right? Pay attention to. Pay attention to love the Lord your God. Pay attention to love your neighbor. Paying attention means that you're, you have an acute awareness of what's going on with your neighbor. That way, we're not having these incidences where maniacs are getting a hold of firearms and letting loose in schools and, and parades and everywhere else because maniacs shouldn't have weapons. That's a no-brainer, right? I mean, that's fairly simple. The rest of the law-abiding veterans and others, they should have their weapons, a thousand percent. And whatever it is that they feel will help keep them from tyranny. Let me continue on. And Yeshua answered them, Shema Israel, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is this that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these, the entire law and the... Are what? Are what? Pointing at your daughter? What? I don't get it. Pointing at your daughter? Yeah, everything is dependent. And for those of you who are critics of the Old Testament, everything is dependent. And where is that found? In the Old Testament. Get back to studying. All right, let's go on. Let me go on. Where should our root be? The Word. The Torah. Everything comes from there. Yeshua just said it in the Shema, right? Everything comes from there. Our root should be planted in His love, in love of the Lord. But let's continue. The beginning of this Parsha of one of the Besorah portions, it begins with Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who in this day and age goes forth in the name of God, in the name of the Lord? Who, who here goes forth in the name of Yeshua? Who? Okay. All right. All right. Y'all done put your hands up. Here we go. It is you and I who meet people in the name of the Lord. It is you and I who go forth in the name of the Lord. And as we have professed to be his priests and his children and his servants, as we're professing this, it is us. 
that he is entrusting with this season and with this age. We always read about the great characters of history, whether we're talking about Martin Luther King or we're talking about any of the other great people, Rebbe Snearson, and on the list goes, right, with great men of faith and great women of faith who, who moved in their seasons, who refused to just go along in their times. And that's no different today, except that the Martin Luther Kings of today are you. The Rebbe Snearsons of today are you, right? The, the Mother Teresas and all the other great people are us. We simply have to say yes and then be the yes. Let me go further on. Do we believe or do we know that we can affect change even today and now? Do you know that you can? For better or worse, everything around may be the product of the generations past who focused on creating a climate of dependence instead of a climate of blessing, learning, and growth. And make no mistakes, there have been people in history who wanted to help create a climate where people were dependent on governments or kingdoms more than they were on their own God-given ability to rise up and make a change. We honor our governments and, and our kingdoms. We honor them. We adhere, like Daniel, to the rules and, and ways. But when they come into conflict, with what the Word of God says, then you and I have an obligation as Daniel to stand up for what is right and true and not just go along because there's somebody pretty involved with the nonsense. Let me go further on. As an example of Yeshua embracing the young in faith and rebuking harsh behavior. Right? We know this story. The children and, and the unlearned were flocking to Yeshua and, and Brother Peter and the other disciples started pushing them back and keeping them back and saying, no, 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 no. Oh no. But see, that's precisely why the Torah was given in the wilderness. So that no one could take claim as owners of the Word of God, but rather that all have the opportunity to grab the Word of God and to be blessed eternally by it. Any and everyone has the opportunity to take hold of the scriptures, take hold of the morals in it, and put them into practice. And as Yeshua, rebuke harsh behavior. More often, people want to sling rocks at each other for pronouncing words in different ways, especially in the Messianic movement. And the king is about salvation, liberation, hope, trust growth it's 
it's not about overly overly amending scripture to suit your agenda or your mood it's not about that it's not putting so many safeguards between you and scripture that you'll never get to it it's not that either it's about taking scripture at face value and putting it to practice without trying to diminish any one of the three sections of this book because they're all valid in their own way but that being said the latter two books are primarily commentary on the first book you have to know that you have to know this even Yeshua himself is the manifestation of the first book let me go on Instead of harsh behavior, we should learn from our patriarchs and our matriarchs. Specifically, in this case, Aharon. Though he was not allowed to enter into the promised land. His behavior and his conduct before and after his error rings true for us today. He was known as the peacemaker. But he didn't go along with just anything. Let me say that again. Aaron was known as the peacemaker, but he didn't just go along with anything. He was like, he purposed himself to be like a family member to each and every person because he had made peace within the family. And as representatives of his kingdom, first thing we do, instead of trying to prove somebody wrong, is make peace. Because people cannot learn if there's no peace, right? They're busy trying to fight you. They're not going to learn from you if they're busy trying to fight you. Because you're trying to beat them with your Bible. So... Just an idea, just saying, choose to be a peacemaker. This means you will not go along with nonsense. <gasps> Shocker, right? Sorry, that's, that's not true and I'm not doing it. Rabbi Hillel said it this way. Be a disciple of Aaron. Therefore, so you can pick up the practice and execution of being loving, of being kind, and practicing peace. There is a unique idea. I'm sure nobody's heard of it. To be a disciple of Aaron, according to Avot, to be a disciple of Aaron, loving peace and pursuing peace is to be a disciple of Yeshua. Because Yeshua also promoted peace and to love, right? I know somebody's going to bring up, oh, but he rebuked. Yes. And he still did that with love. Ain't that an amazing thing? He didn't sit there and scream in their face, like, you're going to die. You should all die. You're evil. No. He could have. For some people, he may should have, but... Either way, he didn't feel that that was what was needed. And he knows best. Yeshua says it this way in Matthew 5 and 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called... What's that? What are them peacemakers called? Children of God. Ain't that a concept? There's something to identify as, right? Forget it, identifying as anything else. Identify as that. Be a child of God. It might do you wonders. Those of you who are busy trying to identify as... And another thing, just a side note, okay? For me personally, make peace with who God created you to be. Make peace with that. 
because there is something within you that is amazing, unique, and beautiful. And you just have to get to that and bring that to the surface, right? Instead of trying to figure out all kinds of weirdness, look at who you are naturally, biologically, physically, and go from there, right? Let me go further on. For if you forgive men when they have sinned against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. That is something to consider, right? Forgiving them isn't going along with unkosher behavior. Forgiving them is letting it go. Giving it over to God because it's something you can't handle, right? It's trusting that He's going to work it out. You now have the, the, the uh, wonderful challenge of not feeding into the argument every single time you see this person. You have the wonderful challenge of not participating in the animus, right? In the animosity that's steadily building all over the place. You are called to be a child of peace. Those are these, those are these uh, two cousins. And they spent half the day arguing with each other, trying to get each other to see this, their point. The problem is they both have their guard up because they're fighting, right? They're not going to see the point. One of them has to decide he's going to be mature and just shh and listen. Just shh, listen, right? Shema, listen. Hear what, let them get it all out. And then, as a child of God, address the situation, right? Not as an angry person, not as a, but as a child of God. And this statue, Chok, of the Torah, which Hashem commanded the children, saying, speak to the children of Israel and have them take for you a perfectly red, unblemished cow upon which no yoke has been laid. In Isaiah, he says it this way. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are for all we like sheep have gone each one to his own way and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of all of us. Yeshua became unclean while we, you and I, were tame, unclean. He took upon himself our debt our impurity, our trait, so that we might be tahor, pure and clean. I bring this up to say that we will walk in the path of Yeshua. We will be the instruments of light, bringing people out of the darkness, or in some cases, as Rabbi Chernoff said, dispelling the darkness. Right? Because half of our quest here is dispelling nonsense. Yeah. Right? And people try that all the time. They chatter nonsense. They have no backing. They have no evidence. They just chatter nonsense. They, find, they look for more excuses not to be kosher. 
by now they could have been kosher and been good to go, right? Instead of searching three, four, five, six, ten, twenty years to for reasons not to follow God. Let me go on. Isaiah 40, verse 2. Speak tender. Oh, sorry. I don't think I've been speaking too tenderly to y'all. So I do <laughs> I do ask for y'all's forgiveness. And those of you here too. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. <clears throat> sorry. And proclaim to her that her forced labor has been completed. Her iniquity has been pardoned. For she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her errors. Those times that we are struggling or perhaps going along with idle nonsense, <laughs> that's literally what it is too, idle nonsense. Because you're sitting there idle, not doing a thing that's effective, spewing nonsense. I'm going to have to write that down. That's a nice little saying. Um, do carry out your work, your walk. I'm sorry. Carry out your walk knowing that you are doing so unto the glory of God. Walk out your steps of faith, your day to day, knowing that you are doing it unto the glory of the king. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, Grace, mercy, and shalom be with you from God the Father and from the Messiah Yeshua, the Father's Son, in truth and love, lovingly walk in God's truth. Who does John say for us to walk in? In our own truth? Wait, wait. Our version of the truth, right? Because that's a popular one, right? It's depending on how I feel. That's the truth. But in God's truth, the sister said. Verse 4, For I was overjoyed to find that some of you were walking in truth, just as we had received the commandment from the Father, what commandment do we receive, we receive from the Father? Who can answer this? It's one word. Five letters. What word do we receive? That's the word? Here, I'll give you a hint. It starts with a T, ends with an H. Ah, there we go. That's the command that we receive, right? In love. And mind you, Again, he gave it in the wilderness so no one could say it's only mine. But he gave it in the wilderness so all, all wild creatures may come and take hold of the word of God. Right? And to a degree that means us too, before we knew him. Right? When we were still kind of wild. Of course, I don't mean anybody here. Uh, none of you were, obviously none of you were wild. In, in your early years, y'all seem all like very passive and, and oh, easygoing you people. Huh? <laughs> you want to see the pictures? Oh, <laughs> uh, sir. <laughs> all right, let's go on. Those of you, wherever you happen to be, stand to your feet. As we take up the mantle that has been entrusted and passed to us. Oh, wow. We take up the mantle that has been passed to us from the hands of Moshe, from the hands of Aharon, from the hands of Elijah, from the hands of John, from the hands of Peter, from the hands of Paul. This, is, this truth has, has only been passed forward. Every generation, every season, he raises up more leaders who will carry and pass forward his truth. To repair the world in this age, to make a difference in this age, to set aside a place for him in this age. 
in both our homes, in our journeys, in our pathways, and in our personal lives, and most certainly in our kahilas, our synagogues and churches. to invite and welcome into our lives, our homes, to be our king, to be king in all of our choices and ventures. Father God, we thank you, Father God, Today, we thank you this day, Father God, for raising up in this generation, in this time of creation. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for raising up people who will say yes to you and stop looking for excuses to say no. We thank you for those who have risen up and have chosen your scripture, your word, your ways. And we're not looking for loopholes. We thank you for the salvation that's provided. We thank you for the healing that's provided. We thank you for the provision that's provided. But most of all, we thank you for your presence, that you continue to provide your presence at the kahilas, at the synagogues, at the churches. Father God, may your nation of believers rise up and not just sit around on their hands, but may they rise up and speak the truth and be honest with themselves, with their neighbors and their loved ones, because they too are chosen and purposed. Now let's find that purpose and start walking towards it. Instead of digging into so many of these distractions and, and nonsense idols, God, Bless these people who have risen up, who have said yes to you. Bless those who are on the internet who say yes to you. May we all choose to step out in faith every day and hold to your truth and your promises and not be swayed by some nonsensical ideas that have no backing or truth. May we be the declarers of your love. May we be the declarers of your healing. And may we be the doers of your kingdom. God, we thank you. We ask that your hand be over each and every person who is here and those who are watching. We thank you, Father God, for each and every person. May God bless all of those who are standing. May he even bless those who aren't standing. May you know with all certainty who you are. And may you be mindful to share your testimony and be mindful of your testimony at every occasion. God bless you, each and every one. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 Is there a rabbit in here? Is there a rabbit in here? It's at home. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lehem min hares. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey, hey. Hmm? What? 
You're about to step in something. Oh, Baruch is out tonight, oh, he knew me like how long, bore, prehagapen, amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit from the vine. Sure, what would have been better? Water with ants or hot Mountain Dew? Uh, <laughs> either one was a great idea. Okay, uh, gentlemen, can y'all hold the tallit over the, uh, the future leader there? Stay right there. You ain't even got to move. You stay right where you're at, princess. Okay, as we extend our hand towards the future leaders of our faith, of our nations and our communities, may we help guide, guard, and instruct them along their journeys in truth and with love. <laughs> May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. Yisim Elohim to Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. May God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. May the Lord protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and like Esther. May you be as Ephraim and Manasseh. Strengthen them, O Lord, and keep them from the stranger's ways. May God bless you and grant you long life. May the Lord fulfill our Sabbath prayer for you. May God make you good husbands and wives. May he in his mercy love and care. May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord preserve you from pain. May the Lord preserve you from pain. Favor them, O oh Lord, them, with oh happiness Lord, and with peace. Happiness, oh, oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. Amen. <laughs> um, we do apologize. Anybody who was hoping for the Ariel finish, uh, she's not in the in with us this week, okay? Uh, all right. Um, let me see. Really quick announcements, really quick before we do the ironic benediction. Uh, right. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There it is. Okay. All right. First and foremost, we want to say congratulations because there is a wedding coming this, this coming weekend. Ahead of us, 
So we want to congratulate ahead of time the young couple. May there be many blessings upon them. Secondly, all of the couples uh, who are having or have had children within this year, uh, may God bless them. May God cover their children and them with his hand. Um, and let me see. Okay, and Tuba'av and Tishba'av observances will be in August. So if you get involved with your synagogue or with your place that you go, the assembly or church, and uh, make a difference in your community. Don't just sit around while nonsense flies about. Okay? Uh, I think that's it. Uh, let's, let's gather for the ironic benediction. Do you have any other announcements? Good news, good news. The synagogue has been blessed. I'm not going to say by who because may God bless each of those three individuals 60 fold for their efforts. But the synagogue was blessed and so we're, we're excited for the Holy Days to come around to see that full on, okay? Woo! And that's where I'll leave it. Right. And these are the words that Yeshua spoke of the Talmudim as he ascended. These are also the words that, Yesh that Moses instructed his brother Aaron to pronounce over the sons and daughters of Israel. <laughs> His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Yeshua Messiah. Good job. There you go. <laughs> Woo! I know the Sephardics were loving that. What do you mean, Shabbos? <laughs> Alright. God bless you. We love you all. Shabbat Shalom.